I am the wife of the great Carl, and I carry his son inside me. The next time you raise a hand to me will be the last time you have hands. Welcome once again, my fellow manipulators of Digital Fate. I'm Richie, this is Capricorn, and this is our first brew. Finally, Outlaws of Thunder Junction is here, our first standard brew with Outlaws cards. And I'm super pumped about this one. This one is called Mount the World, because we absolutely do. Not only is it a hyper-synergistic Mount Tribal deck that uses synergies on top of synergies to get insane value, but we also have a one-hit combo potentially built into the deck that can go off as early as turn four with Calamity. And it's just bananas, you have to see it. It's four colors, this deck is crazy. Uh, before we get to the deck, Make sure you like the video if you haven't already. We need this deck to get out to as many people as possible, and the more likes I get, the more people see this video, and uh, it just, it means so much to me that we can help this channel grow and continue to bring in more and more people to the community, so please, please hit the like button and subscribe if you're new because I've got a deck tech coming every single day. We've got a ton of crazy ones. Uh, the video that I have for the first 10 deck techs is still live if you haven't checked that out already i'm going to link that in the description below um check that out because there's still time to vote on those decks and see the ones that you want to see most pop up sooner rather than later uh that's open to all channel memberships and to our patrons over at patreon at even the one dollar level uh if you're a patron you can vote on that stuff so the, the poll is going to be going live for patrons in just a little bit. It's already live for channel members, so if you wouldn't mind becoming a channel member, I would greatly appreciate it. I appreciate all the support you guys have given me so far. Things have been crazy lately, and the channel's been growing like crazy, and I have a feeling that's because of you guys hitting that damn like button so often. So thank you so much for doing the thing. I super appreciate it. Make sure to catch me live Monday through Friday over on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash quarantined Capricorn. Because if I'm alive and I'm breathing, I'm there and I'm streaming. In fact, if you're watching this the night it goes live, I'm probably still streaming because I'm about to get on for the second half of our marathon stream, all day marathon stream, and we're going to brew even more craziness. So head on over to Twitch, join in. It's going to be a fun time. The first community night is happening this Thursday with the new set, Outlaws of Thunder Junction. So if you want to play me in games using cards from the new set, play against my newest decks, on community night that's happening thursday over on twitch so make sure you do that one last thing if we get to 100 channel members live streams are going to be coming to youtube so it's not going to just be stuck on twitch anymore that includes my normal live streams and also community nights so if you want to become a channel member do the damn thing hit the button become a member i'll see you there but for now we're mounting the world. Let's do it. All right, so we're finally doing it. Mount Tribal. This deck is bananas. Four colors, and we absolutely make it work because of three tribal lands, which is really, really important. But the idea here is we've got a hugely synergistic mid-range build that can just be insane and get insane value on its own. But then on top of that, we also have a really, really crazy combo that can sometimes just win the game as early as turn four. So we're gonna talk about that combo first and then we're gonna start at the bottom of the curve and we're gonna go over the rest of the deck. So Calamity, Galloping, Inferno. Six mana for a four, six legendary horse mount with haste. When it attacks, while saddled, you get to choose a non-legendary creature that saddled it this turn and make a tapped attacking token that's a copy of it that you have to sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step. But then you also repeat this process once. So it's important to note that it's not part of the same ability. It's not an, a triggered ability that gives you two tokens. It's a, a triggered ability that gives you one token and then the entire process gets repeated again, which means you have that token first before you get the other trigger. So, what happens here is we can use Calamity Galloping Inferno in conjunction with Roaming Throne. Four mana for a 4-4 four, four with Ward 2. 
we can name mount when it comes into play so that it works for all mounts. And what it does is not only does it become a mount and count towards things that are going to care about mounts in this deck, of which there are a couple, but also any triggered ability of any mount once we've named mount that triggers is going to trigger an additional time. So what happens here is if we have roaming thrown on, on the field and we use it to saddle the Calamity, even, even if we don't use it to saddle Calamity, as long as it's on the field and we saddle Calamity with something else, it'll still work. Uh, what will happen is the trigger will happen when Calamity attacks. We'll get a copy of the roaming throne or whatever we saddled it with. And then we'll get a second copy because roaming throne will, will give, an, give us an additional trigger. But then when we repeat that process, it counts as a separate trigger, which means we're going to get one more from the Calamity and a second one from the Roaming Throne, which means at the very least, if we're saddling the Calamity with one of our other creatures, the Roaming Throne means we get four copies of that creature attacking instead of two. Now, I haven't been able to quite test this out yet, and I'm hoping we get to in the games coming up, but my theory is that if we crew, or rather saddle Calamity with the Roaming Throne and swing, we are immediately from the first trigger get two Roaming Thrones, one from Calamity, one from the Roaming Throne copying. Um, and then when the second trigger goes off, I think it will count those two copies of Roaming Thrones that are now in play, so that we'll get a total of four more. One from the original Roaming Throne, one from the Calamity, and now two from each of the copies of the Roaming Throne we made with the first trigger. And I think that works because it specifically says repeat this process once, but I'm not 100% sure. So we're going to test it out when we get into the games, and I'm hoping that's what happens. But even if it doesn't, being able to just make four Roaming Thrones instead of two when you swing with Calamity, or four of anything when Roaming Thrones down, is going to be insane in and of itself. So, being able to just slam this and swing for 20 or 28, whatever the, the final number ends up being, can just be absolutely bonkers and win the game outright. But, the deck is perfectly lined up to allow for us to do this on turn 4. And that's because of Intrepid Stable Master. 2 mana for a 2-2 two, two human scout with reach. We can tap it for a green. We can also tap it to add 2 mana of any one color, but use that mana only to cast mount or vehicle spells. So if we play Intrepid Stable Master on 2, we can tap it for green on turn 3, along with our 3 lands, to play Roaming Throne. Which doesn't count as a mount until it's in play, so we're not going to be able to get the 2 mana to play the Roaming Throne. But we can just get the normal green, right, from the Stable Master, play the Roaming Throne on turn 3. And then on turn 4, we're not able to just get that 1 green from the Stable Master, we can actually tap it for double red to put towards playing Calamity, because Calamity is a 6 drop, so not only does Intrepid Stable Master speed us up a whole turn as far as our normal things we're playing, like Roaming Throne on turn 3, but it's going to doubly speed us up for the Calamity, which means we can go turn 2 Stable Master, turn 3 Roaming Throne, turn 4 Calamity, crew it with Roaming Throne, potentially swing for the win on turn 4, which is absolutely bananas. But then in addition, we've got some more crazy triggering, uh, next to Roaming Throne by also using Delny Streetwise Lookout. Now this isn't going to trigger the Calamity, but it is going to trigger everything else in the deck, and we've jammed the rest of the deck with stuff that's going to work with Roaming Throne really well, or also potentially Calamity really well. So the rest of the deck looks works super well with Delny. 3 mana for a 2-2, creatures we control with power 2 or less can't be blocked by creatures with power 3 or greater, so if we're swinging with any of our mounts, and we're keeping them at 2 power, of which most of them are, other than Calamity, they're going to be able to basically get through unblockable, at least by big stuff that matters, that's going to be able to just eat up our creature, right? But more important than that, if any ability of a creature we control with power 2 or less triggers, that ability triggers an additional time, and that's not just limited to attack triggers, which gets really crazy. So, we're running 2 copies of Delny, to go alongside our four copies of Roaming Throne, and even though that doesn't help with the, the combo with Calamity, it does help with everything else in the deck, and everything else in the deck is super synergistic with the Roaming Throne or Calamity, so it still fits in the deck super, super well. If we don't get the combo off, we can still get a ton of value off of Delny. So let's start at the bottom of the curve and talk about that. First of all, we have Frontier Seeker. Two mana for a 2-1. When it enters, we look at the top five cards, 
and we can reveal a planes or a mount from them and put it into our hands. So we do have a number of planes. We have one basic planes that we can fetch that's mostly there in case they use land destruction on us and we need to fetch a basic. But then we've also got four Jetmere's Gardens. So there is a little bit of upside here in that we could fetch a land. Uh, it's not going to happen very often, but we could. We have 15 mounts in the deck. So we should see one mountain every four cards, which means if we get to look at the top five cards of our library with Frontier Seeker, we almost always grab a mount, which is just insane card advantage. Not only that, but it's an ETB trigger. So if Delny's in play, we actually get to copy that trigger. Or on the off chance that we name human instead of mount for roaming throne, we could copy the trigger as well. And sometimes, usually we're going to not want to name Mount, but sometimes we might be in a situation to name Human, because the other thing I want to mention is every creature in this deck that's not a Mount is a Human. So it's kind of like a dual tribal thing, and the Humans fit perfectly with the Mounts, being the perfect cards to kind of enable them, but it also allows us to play all of the tribal lands, so that even if we have to choose Human as the creature type for one of our lands, uh, we're able to play out all of our humans, and as long as at least one of our tribal lands says mount, we're probably fine to get all the mana we need for all four colors of our mounts, which is super, super effective. Um, so Frontier Seeker will come down, almost always find us a mount, sometimes find us a land under extreme circumstances, and get to double trigger if we have Delny on the, on the field, which is awesome. We've also got three Miriam Herd Whisperer. Now, this is a little bit of a nombo with Delny, so you have to be careful how you use this, but it's also too good to not use. So a 3-2 Legendary Human Druid for 2 mana in the colors of Selesnya. As long as it's your turn, mounts and vehicles you control have Hexproof. That's the key. If Miriam's down, when we try to do our Calamity combo, they can't interfere with the combo. Since Calamity has haste, it just all happens all at once, right? And they can't interfere with it on our turn if we have Miriam down because all of our mounts are going to have Hexproof. Uh, which is kind of awesome. But then also whenever a mount or vehicle you control attacks, you get to put a plus one plus one counter on that creature. Now sometimes that ability is insane and very beneficial to this deck, but you do want to keep in mind, if you want to get double triggers off some of our other mounts, which I'll get to in a minute, you want to keep them at power two or less so that they trigger Delny. So you do want to be careful in how you play around Miriam and Delny, uh, and sometimes you want to make sure you get a trigger off of your mount that gets a double trigger off Delny before it gets that counter from Miriam. Uh, so you want to be careful with how you play around it. But let's let's move on to our two drop mounts. We have four Caustic Bronco. This is the whole reason that we're going with all the tribal lands and we're running four colors so that we can run black. And there's a good reason for it. A 2-2 two, two for two. When it attacks, you reveal the top card of your library and put it into your hand. And then you lose life equal to that card's mana value if Caustic Bronco isn't saddled. So if it's not saddled, it's basically a Dark Confidant every turn, right? But it saddles for three. And if you've saddled it, not only do you still get the card, but your opponent loses that much life instead of you losing it. So not only do you save that life and not have to pay it, but your opponent also loses it. Which, if you can get multiple triggers on a Caustic Bronco, you can just end the game so quick. Whether it's making copies of Caustic Broncos because of Calamity, or getting double triggers from Roaming Throne, or, like I said, keeping the power at 2 so that when it swings, it can be virtually unblockable with the Delny, but also get double triggers from the Delny so that you get two cards off the top and make them lose life equal to, the, to both cards, can get pretty insane. And next to the Caustic Bronco, we also have Seraphic Steed, 2 mana for a 2-2 First Strike Lifelink, which is super good against aggro. It really helps us um, pad out our life against aggro, and the first strike means it's hard for them to swing in with some of their smaller creatures, which is nice. Whenever it attacks while saddled, you get to make a 3-3 white angel creature token with flying, and it saddles for four. So that, that four, that saddle four and saddle three are very important. We need to make sure that on curve, we have opportunities to play something on turn three that can immediately saddle either of these guys, but if we can just swing in with the Seraphic Seed and get multiple triggers off that, so you start to see here that even if we don't get the Calamity combo, like the ability to get multiple triggers with Roaming Throne and or Delny on both Caustic Bronco and Seraphic Steed is kind of insane and makes up for it. And keep in mind the fact that Frontier Seeker, even though it's not a mount, will still be able to get double triggers off of Delny regardless for entering the battlefield. So. 
that can get pretty insane. But moving on to our three drop slots, we have Ornery Tumblewag. And what's great about Ornery Tumblewag is it's another mount that's only two power. I considered some other mounts before I finally ended up at this card. And the main reason I ended up with this one is because of the two power. You can put your counter on a different creature, maybe even not your mount, maybe like your Frontier Seeker or something, right? And if you have Delny in play, you're gonna get double triggers. If you have Roaming Throne in play, you're gonna get double triggers. If you have both in play, you're gonna get triple triggers, right? Not only on the initial trigger of putting counters on things, so you get a bunch at the beginning of combat, but if it's saddled and it's also gonna swing in, it's going to get extra triggers, which are going to double the number of plus one, plus one counters on target creatures. So if you have a, both a Roaming Throne and a Delny in play, you distribute three counters as soon as you go to combat. And then if this guy is saddled and you didn't put any of the counters on the Tumblewag, the Tumblewag can swing in, be virtually unblockable because of Delny, and then get three triggers of doubling counters on something. You could do all three on the same creature so that you get insane counters on it, or you can split them up if you put counters on different amounts of creatures. You can double separate creatures with each of those triggers. You can do bananas stuff, but even if just a Roaming Throne or a Delny is in play, the ability to, you know, double up on the number of counters you place for the initial hit at the beginning of combat, but then also potentially double your attack triggers that double the counters on a creature, doubling both of those in the same turn is, is where it gets really crazy. So we're including three Ornery Tumble Wags. Not the full play set because it is more important to do something else with our three mana in addition to Delny, and that's Outcaster Trailblazer. Now this, most importantly, is a human with four power for three mana. That's the main reason that this fills this slot, because it can come down on turn three and immediately saddle the Seraphic Steed or the Caustic Bronco because it has that four power. So that's the most important way to use this. And then it sits there as a four power creature that in subsequent turns, if we play our Roaming Throne, if we play our Calamity, uh, we can draw cards off of Trailblazer. Even if we play a second Trailblazer, right? We can draw cards off the Trailblazer because anytime a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield, we get to draw a card. But we can also set ourselves up to plot this to help us get to our Calamity. So if we don't have a Stable Master online, and we're not going to be able to get to our sixth land anytime soon, we could plot Outcaster Trailblazer and then play it on a turn where we have five lands so that when it enters the battlefield, we paid zero mana for this, the, the creature because it was plotted. We generate a mana when it enters the battlefield and then we get our six mana so that we can play our Calamity that turn. And then we can immediately crew the Calamity or saddle it with the Outcaster Trailblazer and swing and make two copies of the Outcaster Trailblazer, which is gonna make us more mana and draw a bunch of cards because they're all gonna trigger each other because they're all four power creatures. And then you have what, like three Outcaster Trailblazers in play. So if you can play creatures after that, you're gonna draw three cards for each four power creature you play after that. It gets super insane. So the fact that this can help us speed out our Calamity as an optional way instead of Intrepid uh, Stable Master and be a really good target for uh, saddling up the Calamity, but then also be a way for us to immediately on turn three, saddle up our Seraphic Steed or Caustic Bronco to swing in immediately for value. It just kind of does everything we, we want. And honestly, I think this card <laughs> is going to be one of the better cards in Outlaws of Thunder Junction when the dust settles. This card's insane, and I can't believe more people aren't talking about it. The value you get off this and the different ways you can use it, it just gets absurd. And again, it's a human, so it's really important that all of our support cards in this deck that aren't mounts are humans, because we're playing with all of the tribal lands. We have a new one, Bucolic Ranch, which makes a mana of any color specifically just for mounts, but it also gives us the ability to dump some extra mana into it when we're out of gas and look at the top card of our library, and if it's a mount, we get to reveal it and put it into our hand. So at the very least, it's also another way to kind of gas up a little bit when we're running out of steam, which is nice, but it has to be mount. Whereas Cavern of Souls and Secluded uh, Courtyard, we can choose a creature type when it enters. So if we absolutely need the fixing for mount, 
whether to get our black for Caustic Bronco, or whether to get a red for Calamity, or whatever the case may be, we can choose Mount. But if we have the colors that we need for Mount, we can choose Human. So, because we have our creatures evenly split between Mounts and Humans, it makes it so that we can do what we would normally want to reserve for just a one creature type in a deck thing running all these tribal lands, we can still get away with it in this deck because we can choose either or and make it work. So it's really important to make sure you keep track of your mana and make sure you get to the point where you can have a mana of any color for your mounts, but then also have at least one mana of whatever color you need for your humans. It also helps that all of the humans are in just green and white. So along with the Bucolic Ranch, Cavern of Souls, and Secluded Courtyard, we have four Razor Verge Thicket, one Brushland, the one Plains as our one basic, because if they hit us with land destruction, we're going to need it. Um, but it also, this being the one basic we have, means we can find it with the Frontier Seeker, which is a nice little bit of extra value. But we've got one Zyatora's Proving Ground as a way to get that black mana one extra way, right? Four Jetmere's Gardens, because... They are planes that we can find with the Frontier Seeker, and they find us three of our important colors of mana, one being red, and we're gonna need double red for Calamity, right? And then we've got just one Thrawn Portal, since we're kind of going wide with four colors here. To me, it makes sense to just add one of these. We don't ever want more than one in play because we're forced to take one ping when we use it, but I think just the one as basically like a four color pathway in a way, uh, makes sense for decks like this where you need access to so many different colors of mana, but you still want to curve out appropriately. And that's what's great about this deck. We only have five lands that ever have to enter the battlefield tapped, except for maybe the Thrawn Portal if, if you get it super late, right? Um, and that allows us to curve out super well. Like, we're always playing a two-drop into a three-drop and hardly ever have to worry about, you know, a land coming into and into play tapped later on, which is really, really awesome. So, this is the deck. The combo's absurd. Calamity's nuts. Seraphic Steed. Caustic Bronco. Ornery Tumblewag. We've got 15 mounts uh, that all count for, like, something like Frontier Seeker or naming route mount for Roaming Throne. But then we also have 15 cards that can work with Delny, because even though Calamity doesn't work with Delny, Frontier Seeker does. So 15 for both means exactly a quarter of our, of our deck works with either of those, which is exactly kind of the number you want to hit at the very minimum. So I think the deck is kind of perfect where it's at, although I am looking forward to iterating on it in the future because I think the build is just insane and I think there's even more room for growth and trying out other cards and, and really taking it over the top. But even as it stands, the deck is insane and you just have to see it in action. One last thing before we jump into the games, I did try out a couple other cards that you might see pop up in a couple of the games. Since it's launch day, I didn't want to wait um, to get even more, more games under my belt before I made this deck tech and got it all out to you, so I didn't cut those games out. But uh, we did try Ishin at one point, you'll see that pop up in a game. Um, he's good, but I don't think he's as good as Delny. Um, because he specifically only triggers on attack, and he takes three different colors of mana. So we ended up cutting him. Uh, we also tried out one of the other mounts at one point, and we tried out a different three drop as a four power thing, um, which we ended up eventually cutting just to go all in on the Trailblazers, because we realized how crazy the Trailblazer is. So if you see a couple random cards pop up, don't worry about it. Essentially, it's still the same. Like, we replaced the Ishin with another Delny. Uh, we replaced the other four power human with a Trailblazer. So, the deck is still essentially functioning the same way it would, but you might see either of those cards pop up in some of the games. So, just keep that in mind. But this is the final version of the deck we landed on by, by the end, and I think it's bananas. I'm going to stop rambling. Let's do the thing. All right. We have almost everything we need for the combo. We're absolutely keeping this hand. Start with the garden. We'll go into a thicket and the stable master. If he kills the stable master, we can always just Miriam. Hmm. 
We'll name Mount. We'll still get out the Roaming Throne. It's it's possible we could top deck. Right? Let's see. We outcast our Trailblazer. We make a mana. We don't have any mounts though, right? So we can only use the Stable Master for one mana. Which means there's no real way to do everything we actually want to do. Siphon insight me. Okay. We're just gonna plot that guy. Oh, it will still get the counters from Miriam because now that it's in play, it counts as a mount. Nice. So we can't play it as a mount using tribal lands. Oh, we almost had the combo, guys. We're gonna name Mount. We're gonna make a red. We're gonna play Calamity. We're gonna draw a card. Then we're gonna crew Calamity with the Trailblazer. Swing. For a lot. <laughs> and draw a lot of cards. Yeah. That's... Bananas. Green. White. Holy shit. Yeah. This, uh, this deck did a thing. It's, it's doing things. It's doing all the things. It's doing every single thing. We don't have another sweeper? Oh. My. God. Do we just get really crazy? And play the roaming throne? Or is he holding up removal? Let me think. We just gotta go for it, right? Mount. We'll draw a card. Gonna kill a calamity? That's fine, it happens. We will swing. He can trade if he wants. Is he gonna sunfall? He's got a colorless land, which is kind of sick. <laughs> Chimil. Okay. Outrageous robbery. Really need to get some value on the board here. Let me think. How do we get through? Is there any way to get through? Probably not. We'll play Miriam. We're gonna Frontier Seeker. Oh, we don't have the white for it, because I played the Miriam. Let's just put out the Caustic Bronco. And not the Steed. Because we want something to get triggers on the Rolling Throne next turn. And the Bronco by itself could win us the game. 
But if we put out all of our, our mounts and then he sweeps again, it's not going to be great, right? Yeah, see? It's fine. We can probably deal with it. We top deck Calamity and he doesn't have two, two mana removal at instant speed. Okay, we did not top deck Calamity. Alright, we are going to grab Calamity here, we're going to play the Jetmere's Garden, we're going to plot this, go ahead and Sunfall, go ahead. We've got a Trailblazer, a Calamity. And one of our two drops next turn, if we want. I hope you're ready to Why did you... Lose. Oh, because he discovered it. But then why didn't he use the loyalty ability? Over in case he has a counter spell. Draw the card. We don't have any other way to get in any more damage, right? do this. Instant speed removal. Uh, okay. That was a mistake. Now we get a bunch of trailblazers. So crazy. So crazy. And we got another Calamity in case he somehow gets through this. So, two things are swinging for Lethal Adam. Oh, if we had swung everything at his head, he would still be dead. Protect my people. But alas, we didn't. Do we have a way of sacrificing this at instant speed? My judgment is fine. All right. Well, he goes to one which means he has to deal with every single creature. Okay, we win. Right? No, he could have instant speed removal for two mana. We've got the edge in this fight. So we have six, seven, eight mana. 
Discover five, he gets to deduce here. Let's see, we'll go thicket. Two, three, four, five, six. All right, in case he's got a counter spell, we wanna play this first, leaving behind two mana. Oh wait, can't be countered because of the cavern. And what do we want to be swinging with? I guess this is probably the best thing for two mana that we can copy with the Calamity. So we have to, he has to have instant speed removal now, right? can transform but it doesn't matter because I'm making a copy of the steed. Game over. Alright boys, let's do the damn thing, shall we? opponent is taking a mulligan, which is fine. We're going to play a thicket. We're going to play a courtyard. We're going to choose mount. We're going to play the bronco. question is, do we trailblazer in order to mount the damn thing? Probably. We won't get to use the land, or the mana rather, but it's still worth it. Take four. It also gives us another, the, the Calamity gives us another big hit off of a Bronco too. So that's not so bad. draw a card off the trailblazer we saddle with the roaming throne and we swing with both we get double triggers off the bronco take three take three. Oh boy now we're cooking with fire Crazy. That is way too slow. That is way too slow. What does Helping Hand do? Burn a creature? Doesn't matter, man. It's over. It's freaking over, bro. over. Tumblewag. Go ahead. Double spell. Mount you. 
with you. Next to combat. Counter. Counter. Swing. Double trigger on the Bronco. Take six. Take two. Oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! Ugh, no two drops? What are the chances? Alright, this will keep. Keep six. We're gonna toss back the tumble wag. Start with the proving ground. Turn to stable master. He's gonna do a lot for us. Uh, thicket? Do they kill our stable master? Or do they not care? It's possible they don't care. Inti. Alright, well we're going to start with the Frontier Seeker and see what we draw. Seraphic Steed. Sick. So... Any one color. Okay, okay, okay. So we'll play the Ranch. And then we'll play the Steed. And we'll pass the turn. We'll probably kill the Steed, which is a bummer. So if he doesn't kill a steed, it's a lifelinker, right? Which can be really strong. Oh yeah. Tons of good stuff, Striker. We got three Calamities. Perfect to do our first Mount Brew. And then uh, I got two Jaces. Bunch of other stuff. If you want to watch me uh, cracking everything... It was the first thing we did right right after we did our first sealed, and then we cracked. So when the, the VOD of today goes live later, keep that in mind. You could fast forward and you could see the opening if you want to rewatch. Alright, he's got to kill the Seraphic Steed, right? He doesn't kill the Seraphic Steed, he's crazy. Alright, I guess he's crazy. We're gonna name Human. We're gonna play Ishin. Then... We're going to mount the steed with Ishin. We're going to swing with the steed. Make two three threes. And have a 2-2 two, two first strike life linker. To gain us a little bit of life. Seems awesome. And then we'll play the cost of Bronco. I think that's too much for Mono Red to handle. Uh, this is Rakdos technically, but... Seems pretty bananas. 
You better kill that caustic bronco. Or you're gonna be really unhappy. <laughs> really unhappy. All right, you decided to kill the steed. I think the Bronco's actually better. And I don't think he realizes it. Oh, no, he's gonna kill the Bronco too, right? You gotta kill the Bronco, dude. Yeah, I was gonna say. I was gonna say you gotta kill the Bronco, dude. All right, we're gonna use the ranch. Uh, let's put that on the bottom. Let's play you out, naming mount. And then, I mean... I guess we just... Swing with the Frontier Seeker? No, I'll just swing with nothing. We'll just keep our life total high and make sure we can block. We don't need to race him. We're gonna get overwhelming value once we draw into any of our pieces. Thrill Seeker, sure. So you can kill something if you want. Still, you're running out of gas. You're running out of gas. Because he's just going to kill something with it anyway. By sacking it. So this way we only lose our issue. And we don't take any damage. Hey, there we go. Uh, let's see. I think we want to crew with the Frontier Seekers. So we're going to go red. Play this. And then we're going to saddle with the Frontier Seeker so that we can get the triggers off the Frontier Seeker. And then we're going to hold back the Angel as a blocker still. And he scoops! Thank you, Fuzzy. All right, we're going to keep this. We play Frontier Seeker on two. Hopefully grab a land. There's the Garden. Which means we play the Garden and another Frontier Seeker next turn. Unless we top deck something. Okay, so we'll swing. Do we play the steed? I think we play the steed here. He might remove it, but... I think it makes sense. I think it makes sense to play the steed. Restoration of Iganjo. Hey, we top decked a ranch. I don't think we play Delny instead of Roaming Throne. If we could play Delny and something else, I think that would make more sense, but I think we just play Roaming Throne here. We name Mount. We saddle it with the throne. 
We swing for four and we get two angels. And now it's looking like lethal next turn. We have exactly lethal on the board. Okay, he's gonna ossify something. But if he ossifies the roaming throne, like, he's got to pay the mana? If he ossifies the steed, then what? We put him to two? Does he have more removal? Those angels are going to put in a lot of work, man. Hurricane Robbie. That's not going to do it for you, my friend. Alright, so we could play the Trailblazer, make a, a mana, and then play a Frontier Seeker. I think it's just better to do this, though. Zach seems lethal if he doesn't block, so he kind of has to. Down to four, he could sunfall. We still have some pretty decent ways to recover from a sunfall. Right, we plot the trailblazer, we use the seeker to find our calamity or whatever. seems really strong. Do I want the Trailblazer out? I don't think I care about the Trailblazer. Let's go Frontier Seeker, see what we can find. Calamity or a Caustic Bronco. Let's put the Calamity in our hand. Play the tumble wag. No, I think Delny's better. We could also just plot the trailblazer so that we can make sure we calamity next turn. Oh wait, I didn't saddle. Ugh, so he's not gonna double things. That means he plays Wandering Emperor, exiles an angel, blocks, blocks, takes six? No, he still dies. He still dies, right? I think he still dies. But I was supposed to saddle the tumble, tumble wag with the Delny. And I rushed it, I went to combat. Luckily, unless he has a one-mana removal spell, it's not enough. We have Exaxi's damage. There we go. Gotta remember, <laughs> saddle before swing. Alright, we're gonna try and make this work. We'll keep seven. Start with the Proving Ground. We can go Thicket, and we can play either of our two drop mounts. Since we're up against green, I think Steed can probably survive, and then start getting in and giving us some life to pad out our life total.
As much as I want to plot the Trailblazer, I think it makes sense to just saddle the steed next turn and get an angel. Gain two and make an angel. Seems pretty good. Next turn we'll play Roaming Throne. We'll get real crazy real quick. Topiary Stomper. we probably want to set up with Caustic Bronco, right? Put him at 11. Should still be able to win next turn by just playing Roaming Throne and swinging with the boys, getting double triggers off the Bronco. But if we don't, we get another land and we can Calamity the turn after that. Swing with the 4 2, though. Right? This can't block yet. So if he wants to block my Caustic Bronco, he can't effectively block the Trailblazer. So maybe I do. Yeah. I'm convincing myself. Get two triggers off the Bronco. Take three. Take two. Not gonna kill the Bronco? Wow. Okay, okay. He didn't kill the Bronco. He's totally toast, dude. He's totally toast. Like, watch what's about to happen. <laughs> no, you scooped! We were gonna get so many triggers. Thanks so much for checking out my channel. I'd like to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons over at Patreon. Without you guys, this channel would not be possible. So honestly, thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of your contributions. If you haven't yet, like and subscribe. The more likes we get and the quicker we get them, the bigger this channel will grow and the faster it will grow. I'd love nothing more than this channel to become something very special for you guys, but it's entirely up to you how fast that happens. Also, if you'd like more deck text, that's somewhere over there and if you'd like to see what else the channel's been up to lately that's somewhere up that way also subscribe circle below do all the things